Okay, Crystal, what are you looking at? Chaotic incident, a crush of bodies, food aid related deaths. Western media rushed to create fog of war confusion after a straightforward massacre by Israeli forces left over 100 Palestinians dead and more than 700 wounded. Their headlines and stories followed a classic playbook. Rather than straightforwardly report what we know based on video, audio and visual evidence, eyewitness testimony and reports of doctors who treated the wounded, they instead attempted to shroud the whole, quote, chaotic incident in mystery, thereby running cover for the war criminals who committed this atrocity, the Israeli government, which set the genocidal policy, and the United States, which backs them every step of the way. This in spite of the fact that in many instances, if these news outlets simply followed their own reports to their logical conclusion, the fact that Israeli forces murdered starving Palestinians as they sought food becomes undeniable. Here's a report by Al Jazeera, who had reporters on the ground that day. In the early hours of the morning, thousands of people flocked to Al Rashid Road, southwest of Gaza City, desperate for aid. Instead, survivors say they walked into a trap. By the time the sun rose, the extent of the horror was clear. The dead and the dying lying side by side, gunned down by Israeli fire. The Israelis just opened random fire on us, as if it was a trap. Once we approached the aid trucks, the Israeli tanks and warplanes started firing on us. If this continues like this, we do not want any aid delivered at all. Every convoy coming means another massacre. The IDF, in a series of shifting explanations, attempted to undercut the testi testimony of Palestinians on the ground. There's three different explanations we're hearing from the IDF so far. Initially, it was that there was a stampede that caused loads of people to die. Then there was a suggestion that a truck had actually driven by a civilian driver, had mown down a load of the Palestinians. Then there was a suggestion that actually that this was potentially Hamas. Now, obviously, the fact that A, the IDF has been caught lying often, and B, their story kept changing throughout the day, should make you highly skeptical, to say the least, of their account. But news outlets, nevertheless, gave it great credence. What's more, the one piece of supposed evidence that Israel offered for their version of events was revealed to be selectively edited. And even that video, on careful review, backed up the clear-cut evidence that this was not a chaotic incident, but another massacre courtesy of the IDF. Both the New York Times and BBC Verify noted that this video, which the Israelis offered as evidence of a stampede, was edited and the Israelis refused to provide the original footage. Per the New York Times, quote, the video, which does not include audio, was edited by the Israeli military with multiple clips spliced together, leaving out a key moment before many in the crowd began running away from the trucks with some people crawling behind walls appearing to take cover. Gee, wonder what caused them to flee. Wonder why audio of the gunfire, I mean stampede, was not included. BBC Verify notes that the video shows events in two different locations. In a portion of the footage, you can actually see Israeli tanks and motionless bodies depicted by the red boxes strewn across the ground. Now, this video alone is highly suggestive of what actually occurred. But we've got quite a bit more evidence just to eliminate any potential doubt. Al Jazeera released footage from nearby, which was verified by both the Times and BBC. And in that video, you can hear volleys of gunfire and see tracer rounds in the sky coming from a nearby Israeli military base. Tracer rounds, by the way, are used to mark targets for soldiers to fire on. Here is a portion of that video. <laughs> Now, the Israelis, in one of their shifting fabrications here, claimed their soldiers did fire some warning shots, but that the deaths were definitely caused by a stampede. Well, there is a pretty easy way to know whether or not that's true. You can ask the doctors and hospitals who treated the victims to find out what, what type of injuries they were actually treating. Sure enough, those doctors say the overwhelming majority of their patients were being treated for gunshot wounds not broken bones and other injuries consistent with a stampede. The head of al Auda Hospital told the Associated Press that 80% of the injured at his hospital had been struck by gunfire. So of the 176 wounded, 142 had gunshot wounds. 
The director of Kamal Adwan Hospital said 100% of their injured were treated for gunshot wounds. He also said that the majority of those wounds were to the head, neck, or chest. In other words, attempted kill shots, contrary to that IDF claim that soldiers had felt unsafe and so fired non-lethal shots at Palestinians' legs. And if you don't trust the claims of these hospital administrators, the UN has since sent a team to investigate and confirmed exactly the same information. They found a, quote, large number of gunshot wounds in the wake of what has now been dubbed the Flower Massacre. Ditto Euromed Human Rights Monitor, which had researchers there on the ground from the very first moments of this horror, and they confirmed the nature of the wounds, which were, again, overwhelmingly from gunfire, not due to a stampede. Now, the nature of the wound sustained is about as definitive a piece of evidence as you could possibly get. One side says people died in a stampede. The other side says gunfire. The wounded and dead are riddled with bullets. Case closed. But, of course, that hasn't stopped the media from throwing up their hands. How can one possibly know what happened? What even are facts and reality, really? Alan McLeod has done a great job capturing many of the most egregious headlines. Although, to be perfectly honest, open up literally any Western outlet, and you can easily pull your own sample of atrocious headlines. CNN went with at least 100 killed and 700 injured in chaotic incident where IDF opened fire as people waited for food in Gaza, Palestinian officials say. Now, this one checks a whole lot of manufacturing consent boxes. This is a chaotic incident, not a massacre. The IDF, quote, opened fire, but that gunfire isn't then connected to the deaths. And just for good measure, the whole chaotic incident is qualified as only being based on the word of Palestinian officials. And, you know, who can trust those Hamas-loving barbarians anyway? Forbes says more than 100 Palestinians killed while waiting for food, health ministry says. Here, Israel isn't even mentioned. Were the Palestinians food poison? Were they hit by a tornado? Who knows? And again, this is all only per the health ministry. So how can anyone really know if any of this even happened? The Guardian, in a similar vein, invented an entirely new category of cause of death. Apparently, these Gazans were struck down not by bullets, but they suffered food aid-related deaths. The New York Times decided to compose a tortured haiku in an attempt to avoid ascribing any blame to Israel. Here's their headline. As hungry Gazans crowd a convoy, a crush of bodies, Israeli gunshots, and a deadly toll. In a later, even more outrageous post, they seem to suggest that it was actually Israel's generosity which backfired here. Quote, disastrous convoy was part of new Israeli effort to hand out more aid in Gaza. Really? I can't begin to explain my absolute contempt for all of these ghouls. Because although anyone who wants to know the facts about this massacre can easily find them, the truth is the press attempts to confuse and obfuscate they worked. They needed just to delay enough, just to confuse enough, for Americans to avoid the totality of the absolute horror that we are paying for and running cover for. They need just enough, well, it's complicated, for people to shrug their shoulders at the unfortunate food aid-related deaths from the chaotic incident and then just move on. And they need to allow the Biden administration's paid propagandists to be able to point to the conflicting accounts to avoid having to respond to this carnage directly, which, by the way, is exactly what State, of State Department spokesman Matthew Miller did. So do you think that Israel is complying with this ICJ ruling? And do you believe, uh, do you agree that today's attack uh, near Gaza on starving people waiting for humanitarian assistance uh, violates, violates this ICJ's? So again, let me just say, I don't believe we have established the facts of what actually happened today, but it is important that those facts be established, which is why uh, we have called for an investigation and, and we'll look forward to the results of that uh, investigation. As I've seen, there are conflicting accounts and we don't know the ground truth of what, of, of what happened. Conflicting accounts. We don't know the ground truth of what happened. We call for Israel to investigate themselves. Meanwhile, new horrors are being inflicted on innocent Palestinians so rapidly we can barely even keep track. In fact, more aid seekers were shot by the IDF since the Flower Massacre. Yet again, a new war crime is being normalized. Now, the Biden administration wants to assuage their conscience and do a little PR move by dropping enough aid to feed one meal to 1.6% of the population in Gaza, a single meal, while supplying the bombs and bullets that have enabled this continued slaughter. They can gaslight and obscure reality all that they want, but the blood on their hands is undeniable. And Sagar, I saw the IDF put out the results. Hey guys, if you want to see what I had to say to Crystal's monologue, not just this one, all of them going back to the very beginning, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com.